Developed by Milkful Games and published by No More Robots, Fashion Police Squad is an unusual mixture of two radically different concepts, old-school first-person shooters and high fashion, with the goal of creating a comedic new spin on classic gameplay. This is not a boomer shooter where you slaughter demons with shells and rockets, but rather make the drab look fab with colored dye and needles as your ammunition. Here, Damn, bro. Fashion Police Squad has made a strong case for itself in the last year, with a pair of strong demos. And now that the full game has landed on digital shelves, we can finally see what this debonair doom-like has strutting. Is Fashion Police Squad a shallow gimmick just trying to get a few laughs, or is there a little more to this one under all the glam and glitter? Well, get ready my first-person fashionistas, we're about to find out. Launch. Fantastic. Fashion Police Squad, or FPS for short, Aha! takes place in the fine and fashionable city of Trendopolis, a utopia that values all things Vogue. But not all is well in Trendopolis. Its streets are being terrorized by a horrific force. Fashion criminals, vile souls wearing dull suits, baggy clothes, and the most unforgivable of them all, socks and sandals. <laughs> And who will protect the citizens from this plague? The fashion police, brave men and women dedicated to keeping the streets fine and fashionable, using their state-of-the-art fashion arsenal to turn these fiends from fashion nopes to hell's yeah. You play as Sergeant Dez, one of FPS's finest and doofiest officers, who is on the case to bring the mastermind behind all these fashion no-nos to justice. Time to serve some good old fashioned justice. The plot of this game is absurd and silly, and absurd and silly is my jam. The tale of Officer Dez and his friends unraveling a conspiracy of bad taste is lighthearted and never, for even a millisecond, takes itself seriously, often making fun of its own ridiculous logic and out of left field plot twists. A narrative that had me smiling, laughing, and rolling my eyes. But rolling my eyes like I've just heard a good cringy dad joke. My only issue has nothing to do with the content, but rather the function. For whatever reason, you can't fully skip dialogue sequences, which gets a little irksome on a second playthrough or if you have a cutscene right before a particularly hard fight. Your only option is to smash the E key, which gets annoying. Seeing as the game has a hold space to skip option for the enemy introductions, I don't see why this can't be applied to everything else. But what really gives this game its charming, goofy personality is lampooning first-person shooters, and video games broadly, through the lens of fashion culture. And it is mighty entertaining seeing how creative the devs get with this. Right off the bat, you're treated to a lot of tongue-in-cheek sight gags that are worth a smirk, like your arsenal being fashionized FPS weapons. Here we have a sewing machine behaving like an assault rifle, and a character portrait much like the Doom Marines, except instead of getting bloodied and bruised when you take damage, you get dirtier and disheveled. You don't pick up armor, you pick up swag, like watches and jewelry, and mocktails for health. There's some mighty excellent billboards to feast your eyes on, and everybody should prepare themselves for the Elevator Muzak version of E1M1. Ha, <laughs> 69th floor. I also have to mention the overwhelming amount of pop culture references crammed into this game. I'm not kidding, this game is absolutely saturated with references to film, music, TV, video games, and fashion brands. It's actually pretty impressive, and I'm not exaggerating when I say there's a joke every minute. No, no, scratch that. More like every 10 seconds. Well, that's nightmare fuel right there. However, the tongue-in-cheek celebration of first-person shooters is really only scratching the surface of this game's humor. FPS goes to extravagant lengths to get a laugh that had me cackling like a cacodemon. Seriously, there is a lot of work that went into the silliness of this game, and I'm kind of dying to talk about some of my favorite jokes and references, but to spoil them would be a true crime. This is easily one of the funniest shooters I've played, and it's the dev team's clear love for the genre that makes the humor land. Built in Unity, Fashion Police Squad goes for a 16-bit retro aesthetic, with chunky yet expressive sprites and post-processing effects to give everything a little more depth. 
The graphics are certainly reminiscent of old school shooters, but also draw from the wide zeitgeist of retro gaming, giving the experience a sort of arcade beat em up feel. It's refreshingly bright, colorful, and upbeat. And despite most of it taking place in typical urban environments, streets, subways, etc., the art team did a strong job making the different missions feel distinct from one another. The beginning levels have a sleek, high end Tokyo vibe, whereas the middle missions feature a more European look that brings Paris to mind. Hey, top guy! <laughs> Enemy designs are not only humorous, but easy to separate from one another in the midst of a crowded battle. Artwork for character portraits and the cutscenes is also beautifully drawn and painted. Audio excels as well. The music is comprised of poppy driving chip tunes that brought me right back to the pizza parlor arcades of my youth. Although the game does bring in a wider range of music inspired by other genres for a comedic effect. Sound effects, particularly for the weapons, are chunky and satisfying. And while this game doesn't feature gore or damage effects, as this is a non-lethal shooter, it still effectively gives the player a sense of reward with a pop of smoke and a hilarious announcer call out whenever you defeat a fashion criminal. Thank you for your contribution. I honestly have few complaints, other than the graphical options are on the light side in puzzling ways. I mean, you have the ability to toggle on and off things like motion blur and ambient occlusion, but oddly no texture filtering or anti-aliasing. And that one is especially a bummer as the broader vistas of this game are utterly messy with jaggies. Hopefully more graphical options will be patched in to clean some of this up. Thank you. At its core, Fashion Police Squad stays true to the old school arena FPS formula, but certainly throws in a little extra pizzazz. Levels revolve around finding colored keys for colored doors, or in this case, scissors and ribbons respectively. And going from arena battle to arena battle with a heavy emphasis on platforming. In between missions, the player is treated to an overworld map, where they can tackle optional challenge missions and equip Officer Dez with new drip, which gives stat boosts to your health and armor and or increases your attack power and speed. It's a nice thing to have, but it's not a terribly deep system, and I don't think it had much impact on my experience. And frankly, the most useful pieces of drip don't unlock until you beat the game. Combat is kinetic, fun, and punchy, and the way it works is that each specific fashion criminal can only be defeated by specific fashion weapons. So for instance, the dull suits can only be taken out with the shotgun-like to die for elite paintball gun. Baggy loose suits can only be handled by the tailor-made sewing machine gun, and saggy pants vapors can only be straightened out with the belt of justice melee attack. Focus. Thank you. Majority of the fashion weapons also have an alternate fire that allow them to take on more enemy types or make other types vulnerable for attack. The To Die For has an alternate that drains the color out of the scootering neon bras, and the Tailor Made has a neck grenade that's useful for capturing the fast moving tight suits. As you might have gathered, the main challenge of the combat is in dealing with multiple types of fashion criminals at once, prioritizing which ones need to be dealt with first and quickly switching between the required weaponry, all the while tapping into your reflexes to stay on the move and avoid damage. And what's kind of funny and kind of cool about this is that it basically forces players into the best practices of this style of old school shooter, where typically the best way to play is by prioritizing enemies, swapping between optimal weapons, and generally staying on the move to keep the ouch away. Fashion Police Squad also gradually forces you into it, introducing mechanics one at a time and teaching them through text and gameplay. Admittedly, it does feel handholdy, especially to a genre veteran. Seriously, let me skip this stuff. But for a less experienced player, I think it does a lot to make these mechanics and concepts feel more approachable. In that regard, FPS can actually serve as a decent gateway into first person shooters for someone who has little to no experience with them. 
However, don't let that give you the impression that this is an easy game. As handholdy as Fashion Police Squad is in the beginning, as soon as it gets the basics across, the chains come off and there is a respectable difficulty spike. Nothing outrageous that I couldn't handle, but things definitely got spicier. Had me sitting up in my chair, that's for sure. Battlefields get crowded and intense real fast as fashion criminals pile onto you, and it puts a lot of pressure on the player to keep mobile and keep aware. The bigger battles can be surprisingly exhilarating, and I would say facilitate some of the best moments of the game. But I'd be lying if I said I didn't have a few issues here. But I'm gonna talk about those a little later on. For now, let's take a look at some of these fashion criminals. Do you like my speedos? Enemy variety is one of this game's biggest strengths. Enemies come in all types. You have your long range hitters, bull rushers, enemies that throw bombs, enemies that shoot fire, enemies that do AoE attacks, enemies that can heal other enemies, you name it, this game has it. Baddies also increase in complexity as you progress, like the Spudos that feature two separate health bars that have to be taken down with two separate weapons. And one enemy type holds consequences for hitting them with the wrong weapon type. If the Guy Fieri looking flamers are shot with anything other than water, it can increase the damage of their fire attacks. Unfortunately, none of the other enemies feature consequences like this, and I wouldn't have minded if this system was taken a bit further. There were a couple enemies that did get on my nerves. The Neon Bras who bum rush can be a real pest on the battlefield and are often placed near drops to cheaply knock the player off of them. A little annoying. And the maze spray from potato sack wearing Karens can quickly envelop a room and obscure your view. Not a devastating attack in terms of damage, but irritating in the moment. And yes, that is maze she is spraying. She's uh, holding the can under her like a jetpack. Just uh, <laughs> wanted to make sure that was clear. Fashion police over there. The only enemy I felt didn't really work was the tourist. For starters, their attacks lean on the cheap side, a hit scanning camera flash that not only blinds you, but indeed hurts you. And if the tourist can see you, he can pretty much hit you from anywhere. It's not horrendous damage, and it does vary depending on how close you are to him, but if you get several of these guys and they happen to be placed at far out of reach points on the map or are grouped together, they can cause some frustration. The other thing too is that the solution to defeat them is oddly easy requiring two sock gnomes, one gnome for each of their feet, as their fashion crime is socks and sandals, which I agree, is truly nauseating. The sock gnomes, I suppose, are meant to be a grenade type. When you throw them, they home in on the tourists, and no matter what, when they get to them, they're taking out half of their health bar. My problem here is that there's not a ton of skill involved with the gnomes. If you see tourists, you're safe to throw them out willy-nilly and let them take care of the rest, assuming they're in range, which is pretty generous. There's just not a lot of satisfaction in taking on the tourists in terms of challenge, and they don't really add all that much to combat other than annoyance. So yes, you heard that right. I am criticizing an enemy for being too cheap and too easy. Damn. However, I do think this enemy could work a lot better with some tweaking. At the very least, he could use more of a tell, perhaps a red blinking light right before the camera flash to tip off players to look away or seek some form of cover. And as for the means of dispatching them, part of me just wants the gnomes to behave more like regular grenades, but I suppose you could just decrease their homing range. Although, here's a thought, what if their damage decreases the further they have to travel to the target? So if you hit a tourist dead on, boom, 50% of their health is gone. But if the gnome has to run a distance, the percentage will drop. I feel like that could keep players from just throwing them flippantly. Perhaps a cooldown is needed for this as well. Granted, I'm not a game designer, so these should be taken with a grain of salt, but something needs to be rethought here. My other big issue with the combat concerns something I felt was missing from the game. I would comfortably say that Fashion Police Squad is a movement intensive shooter. I mean, combat puts a lot of pressure on the player to stay mobile, and once again, there's a fair amount of platforming largely focused on your grapple belt, which you can use in combat. I haven't even mentioned the Wet Ones weapon, basically a hardcore squirt gun that can be used to slick up the ground in order to move faster and achieve further jumps. And what's odd to me is that the game puts this emphasis on movement, but for some reason lacks a dash ability and a slide ability for combat. And I'm not pointing this out just because I want these abilities, but because I feel like the game was designed for them and for whatever reason they got left out. Seriously, when you look at how intensive and kinetic the battles can get and the focus on platforming, not having these abilities feels like missing tools from the toolbox. Projectiles often come at you rapidly and in tight patterns, and bum-rushing types pretty much magnet to you at speeds that feel barely dodgeable. 
Not to mention in the more populated battles, enemies can easily surround and block your movement. These are things that feel like they should be handled with a well-placed dash or slide. And the arenas are certainly big enough to support this type of movement, and are populated enough to where spamming them would be unwise. And in my opinion, if you throw enough enemies at a player to the point that it crowds them, you either need to give them the firepower to handle it, or the movement options to get away and regroup, or both. And Fashion Police Squad doesn't really do either, and the result is combat that can have a lot of friction. And you don't want friction, you want flow. <laughs> True, you can use grappling to get out of these tough combat situations, but grapple points are not in as many arenas as you would hope. Now, to be fair, I was really only missing the dashing and sliding during the tougher, later battles of the game, and it's not like their absence dragged the whole experience down. Far from it. But I point this out because if the developers decide to add more to this game, or make a sequel, which I hope they do, this is an area I feel they should focus on to really perfect what is already solid, kinetic, and enjoyable gameplay. Can I interest you? Fashion Police Squad is a breath of fresh air, a hilarious gaming peanut butter cup that takes two very different flavors and somehow combines them into something surprisingly enjoyable. And there's a decent amount of game here too. Took me about 10 hours to get through the campaign and there are good secrets to go back and hunt for along with the bonus challenge missions. The amount of pop culture references and clever genre jokes crammed into this game is nothing short of legendary, and you could tell this was something lovingly crafted by gamers for gamers. The gameplay is fun, dynamic, and surprisingly tricky, but I do think it is held back by a lack of movement functions like dashing and sliding, and in general, I think it could have been iterated on further. There's room for improvement for a sequel. As I said earlier in this review, I do think this is a good starting point for those that are unfamiliar or new to first-person shooters. It does a good job making the mechanics and concepts approachable, and hopefully will inspire people to check out other more intensive titles like Dusk or Doom 2016. Eternal too, but baby steps. For a hardcore player, I'm not gonna lie, it will be easy for you to find annoyances with this game. But if you hang in there long enough, those annoyances will likely slip to the back of your mind as soon as you see the wild, goofy shit this game pulls. It will have you howling, more than likely. What are your thoughts on Fashion Police Squad? Be sure to let me know down in the comments. And if you liked the video, please be sure to subscribe, like, and ring the bell for notifications on future uploads. It's a couple clicks for you, but a massive help for this channel. And don't be shy, come say hi in the Kirk Collects Discord linked below, and be sure to check out my affiliate links. I'm Kirk, and thank you for watching this video. Stay safe out there.